the research that I've been presenting here really has to do with the notion that as people age out of their pediatric care and go on to adult care, that it's kind of a shock and that we don't actually provide a lot of care around that transition. And that happens both in places where they have more money as well as places they have less. But in my community, the one I'm studying, it's an underserved community in Los Angeles where people get lost to care. They end up having no health care and end up in terrible shape from their diabetes. So my research has been both to characterize the difficulties with transitioning care as well as to study programs that can help that occur more effectively. It's interesting, pediatric care and adult care are kind of night and day. So pediatricians are really focused on the family and in fact that's legally required because kids are still dependent on their parents in all ways and parents are responsible to take good care of their children. The day someone becomes 18 years old, that shifts and in terms of even the health care law, it's now the individual, not the parent. So parents can't be by law involved in their child's health care unless the child asks for that. So pediatric care is much more focused on the family as an entity. There's a lot more time, visits are longer, there's often more than one provider. There's often an educator, a dietitian, a social worker. It's much more comprehensive holistic care. Ironically, like the care I'd prefer to give adults, but in most adult systems we don't have that luxury. So adult care is more focused on complications, complication prevention. It's more of an individual provider having 20 minutes with the patient. It's up to the patient to be sure they have their medications, their insulin, their strips, whatever. And so it's a completely different paradigm. And I think that it's very upsetting to lose your pediatric care, which is much more like family care, and deal with the reality of adult care unless you're trained, unless you become prepared for that transition and then help through the transition. Well, there are a couple of very specific things that people can do to prepare. So first of all, the parent needs to start backing off. I would say it maybe age 15, sometimes younger, sometimes older, depends on the kid, but certainly the last year before the kid graduates from high school, they need to be in charge of their own health care so they're prepared. So they need to go to visits by themselves. Mom or dad can be in the waiting room to come in at some point, but it really needs to become independent visits. And then the young person needs to start becoming in charge of their supplies, of putting in the orders, of making sure they understand health insurance. Anything that can be done to help that young person prepare and ideally the pediatrician will also be working on that preparation, the separation, the change. It's very important that the pediatrician work with the family to identify the next health care provider. And whether that's someone that's a friend that they know that's working in another city where someone may be going to college or where the young person, um, even within that own, uh, community, so they're staying in the same town, working to try to find out where the next care should be. Sometimes pediatricians take care of young adults up until their mid-twenties, but if a change is going to happen geographically or a change need to happen because of the institution, identifying the next step, the next place for care is very important. And finally, the parent should really ask for a summary, some sort of whether it's done in a very formal way or an informal way, something that they can then give their young adult to hand to the next place that says this is the sort of issues we were working on, this is the care that needs to be provided in the future, so there's a bridge between pediatric and adult care. I think it's an issue that all of us are aware of, but because in a, the world of things, the number of people with type 1 diabetes is pretty small, and as you transition, it's kind of been considered one of those things you just kind of took care of yourself. 
But as we become more accountable, as we say, look, you know, it's not a good thing to have a 24-year-old out of insulin without a doctor going to the hospital for DKA. As we all become more aware of this, I think people are becoming more aware of this need. But because it falls in between, it falls in between the adult care and pediatric care, and because the system hasn't required that kind of accountability, I think it's just fallen by the wayside. But it shouldn't, and if you know, those of us working in the field have anything to say about it, it won't for the future. What I really want to get out is a set of tools and guidelines for people who may not be as aware partly on the pediatric side, but perhaps even more on the adult side. I think most of us in adult medicine aren't trained on how to deal with an emerging adult. We're trained much more on older people that take up much more of our time in our practice. Now, maybe not for me, because I take care of a lot of young people, but for many people, if they're out in practice as an adult practitioner, they're not going to see that many young adults with type 1. So I think becoming aware of what's there of creating campaigns, creating more enduring materials, you know, getting the word out that this is a group that has specific needs and susceptibilities and then working to teach adult practitioners. So I think this should be increasingly a part of the curriculum when we're teaching adult doctors about diabetes and as more type 2s develop in childhood, we're also going to see type 2s transitioning and I think will become again more and more a part of what we teach adults. So. We have a long ways to go, but we're learning about it, we're characterizing it, and hopefully offering some solutions.